Welcome, it's the Felicia Show, otherwise known as the Creating Connections with Felicia Slattery. And I'm here with my guests, Jeff Herring. Hey, Jeff Herring. Hi, giving you props. Hey, and Jim Edwards. Hey, Hi, down there on the bottom. <laughs> and Jim's got his Good animal job. sounds. Oh, boy. All right, so today we're going to be talking about, as you can see from the title, credibility content and cash cows and how you can use what you know to get known all right so every time you say the word cash cow i'm going to move okay would that be okay i like that and then the cash goat. we'll have cash goats that doesn't work for the copy though cash cow cash goat all right listen we reviewed the the blab housekeeping stuff before we got started so if you're watching on the replay you won't be able to ask questions obviously but you can still share it with other folks. You can like it, subscribe on YouTube for more. That would be fantastic. Um, also, be sure to mark your calendar because next Tuesday at noon, I'll be talking to number one best-selling author of The Go-Giver, Go-Giver Sell More, Endless Referrals, my friend Bob Berg, and we'll be talking all about the elevator speech and networking. So that's next week, but now this week. We have, uh, we're, I'm so, I, I, I'll decide if I'm blessed by in the at the end of the show. <laughs> but I think I'm blessed to have Jim and Jeff here. Uh, Jim Edwards and Jeff Herring were both newspaper columnists and journalists. Now they're mega successful um, authors, speakers, online business owners, and they're going to share their tips and techniques, things that they actually use themselves um, that can help you skyrocket your credibility and make you more money. So... All right, guys, um, I could go on and on and tell stories about how we met. And look, it's, it's, is that Duke? It's Duke. He's joined us. Fantastic. So um, let's just jump in. <laughs> and, I'm on um, camera. I'm on camera. Yeah, go. Get. Jo <laughs> I go. Jerry? Go. No, we have all Jerry. kinds of guests. She just flipped me off. That's my wife. That's, so <laughs> I That's the love first Jerry. ever blab bomber. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Photo bomb slash blab bomb. We gotta love that. All right, so we're gonna give props to uh, definitely give props to Jim and Terry. All right, so guys, let's talk about we're talking about credibility today. So um, whoever wants to jump in first, what does credibility mean to you? What does that mean? Well, I can go first if you want. Okay, to, you go first. To me, I think credibility, as far as in the online business world or just anything that we all do, and you know, offline, online, I think credibility comes down to doing exactly what you say you're going to do. It comes down to then I, I, not only doing what you say you're going to do, but also doing it when nobody's looking. There's a lot mm -hmm. of temptation, a lot of opportunity online for people to do things that they think nobody's really paying attention. You'll see this a lot like with product launches where people will say, okay, well, this is only going to be available until next Friday. And then after this Friday, it's never going to be available again. Then holy crap, next Wednesday, well, you know, for 24 hours, my friend asked me if I'd open it up again for just 24 hours. And so we're going to do that. And it's, and, and we're going to do that. I mean, that's just an, one example but if you say you're going to do something, you do it, and you have to do it as if nobody else is looking. So I think that's, for me, that's the number one thing with credibility is do, saying what you're going to do, doing what you say, and doing it like the whole world was watching because they are. Jeff? And I would take that yeah. even a step further. Not only doing what you say you're going to do, do more. That will really up your credibility. Um, doing, doing what you say you're going to do, that's going to put you above 99% of the folks anyway, right? If you do more than what you say you're going to do, that's going to put you above everybody and you'll be in a category of your own. Yeah, there was a book that I read um, that was written by a guy named A.L. Williams. It was called All You Can Do Is All You Can Do, But All You Can Do Is Enough. And one of the things he mm -hmm. said was that you beat 50% of the people just by showing up. And then you beat another 40% right. of the people by showing up and being a person of integrity. And then he said the last 10% is the is the dog fight and that's where you win in that 10 percent by being an person person of integrity and standing for something bigger than yourself so mm -hmm. credibility is not being a jackass and doing what you see a lot of these people doing but doing what your your mom told you you should be doing just to, just yeah. to underscore that if you've um if you've ever been online and purchased something or, or been associated with someone 
who did not do what they said they were going to do. Um, just hit the heart button for any of us, for Felicia, me, or Jim. If that's so ever Jeff been your never did And in Blab, and in Blab, it's called the props. Jeff's button. If Jeff never yeah, did what he said he was going to do, Blab is props. <laughs> I know, I know. Right here. Yeah, it's, go. it's 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 upsetting when people say that they're um, that they're going to do something and then they don't do it because you're right. People are paying attention. Um, it's the other side of your screen, guys. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's it it's not cool. So we don't want to we don't want to burst our credibility, right? So why then would you say that credibility should matter to people in business? Like, why is that important? Because once you've lost it, you can never get it back. It's it's one of those mm -hmm. things that wow. once once it's gone, it, you can never That's tweetable right ever there, folks. get it back, and you'll see, and it will haunt you forever. If you do something, if you piss somebody off, if you don't do what you said you were going to do, if you don't deliver the way you said you were going to deliver, people will remember it for years. And now with social media, not only can they tell their friends, they will tell their friends with glee about what a jackass you are and about how you did them wrong and ripped them off. And so it's it's even more important. But that's from a from from a self-serving standpoint, but also you got to be able to look yourself in the mirror at night. You got to know that you did the best you could for people and for your clients and for people who weren't even your clients. So it's not just self-serving as far as staying and being in business, but it's also being able to look at yourself and know that you're doing the best you can and you're being the kind of person that you know you need to be in order to to be successful more than just in monetary terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeff, yeah. why would you say it's important? So to make it make it simple. Credibility is everything, folks. You work so hard to get it. Okay. Now think of the the sea that we're in. Okay. Sometimes the 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 teeming wretched sea of all these hard hard ass marketers out there. You know that. And, and here's a great way to lose credibility. Monday, send the biggest, greatest, latest, great offer to your community, and then on Tuesday, send the latest, greatest offer to your community, and then do the same thing on Wednesday, because the smart people are going to be going. Wait a minute. If when if today is the greatest latest offer, what about Mondays? Okay, and, right. and, 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 make, and make sure those three offers aren't the same thing. That's the other. That's yeah, the well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> You're not sending three emails for the same thing. And I, I, you know, the people that I look at as credible. Um, let's go at it from the other angle. I can think of one person in particular that, to me, is completely two people completely non credible. Okay, the first person is I know for a fact because I've heard these words out of their mouth. They have said, I hit my list with an offer every day because I don't know how long this is going to last, and I want to extract every bit of money I can out of it. Okay? That'll toss you credibility right there. Jim's going to get a sign to prove that. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Now, the second person I think about that is the person that has never thought up anything on their own, but they're always getting something from someone else, borrowing it and calling it their own. Okay? No. Be yeah, it's dope, dumb. Because because we're a smaller community in the internet marketing world, people catch that really quick. Okay, that's not yours. That belongs to someone else. Okay, so those are two great ways I see most of the people losing their credibility. Yeah, and and two great slash don't do this kind of ways, right? I mean, like, yeah, good yeah. grief, that's just not right. Yeah. Um, people do it all the time. Yeah. So. You know, we're going to be talking about content in just a second because I know that's what you guys have your content wizard. But other than sharing great content, what would you suggest, Jim? Um, we'll start with you. That speakers, authors, consultants, expert types can do to be more credible, whether it, whether it's online or offline. What would you suggest? As far as instead of just content or creating content. Yeah, yeah. Instead, like we're going to talk more. We'll dig into that in a minute. But beyond that. Like, what else do you maybe do? I think one of the best ways that you can increase your credibility as an author, a speaker, or any type of coach, professional, or whatever, is just to is to share your expertise with, with other people and their audiences, maybe not in the form of articles and videos, but maybe as an, as an interview. If you think about what are we doing here, we're doing an interview. It's, it's not that we're – and we're having a, a discussion. We're having a discourse. Um, that where you're able, you, Felicia, know your audience better than we do, 
And so you, by interviewing us, you're adding value to your group. And we, as speakers, as, as whatever we're doing, info marketers, are able to share specialized, customized content as opposed to just trying to do a one-size-fits-all. Gee, I hope they like this video. And then people being able to ask questions on the side so that it can be customized even more. So I think aside from content, creating content nuggets of video and articles and, and stuff like that, it's doing interviews um, where you're able to answer specific questions that a specific audience wants to know. And that's one of the easier things that people can do once you know how to do it right. So that would be my, my answer is sharing of yourself in a live environment. Uh, it, you, can't, you can't go wrong, no matter how big or small the audience is. And it's good practice, mm -hmm. too, especially if you're a speaker. This is a great, doing interviews this is a great opportunity, whether it's a webinar or on a blab or on a teleseminar. And I miss teleseminars because I was thinking as I was sitting down to do this, I said, man, on a teleseminar, I used to be able to go use the bathroom while you were doing a live show and stuff and no one would ever know. I mean, you can't do that on a webinar or on a blab. Well, I mean, there, you know, on this there blab. is that distinct sound of, of liquid hitting porcelain, Jim. So nah, you got to know how to work the mute button. Um, see, this is messing with my credibility. It's all about you know? the mute button. Yeah, I mean, you could flush while they're saying, hey, great point. So my point, though, is that doing the interview, to me, is is a way to be able to, to really add value that is topical and it's right now. Uh, and, and then you can do some cool content stuff with it. So that's what I would, that would be my answer to your, what was the question? <laughs> so I, 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 <laughs> hey, wait, Jeff, really not, quick, before we do that, Jim sure mentioned a term that, I'm not sure everybody knows. I, I, I see some people in here I know, who I know know. But you said info marketer. Can you say what that is? Because that actually is, is um, you know, starts, starts us digging around the, the path of what content marketing is. And then we'll come back to Jeff to answer, answer the question. I'll ask it again, Jeff, so you remember what it is. <laughs> and an info marketer is somebody who uses targeted content aimed at a specific audience to start and maintain a conversation with that audience uh, to teach them and educate them and talk with them as opposed to a traditional marketer who just talks at people, who throws stuff at people. An info marketer uses information to talk with people and, and have a conversation. Great, so it's about sharing information yeah. and using that as marketing tool. Sure. All right, so Jeff, before we dig into that and the content piece, what else could speakers, authors, consultants, expert types do if they're going to want to build their credibility, whether it's online or offline? What do you think? What, what Jim mentioned is a great example um, of, you know, doing these kind of things. That's why I've done some kind of almost weekly event from the days of teleseminars. Remember those, Felicia, because you were on practically every one when I first started. And, and Jim's right about that whole turning off the mic thing. One time, and I think I was in Daytona Beach, Florida, speaking at an all-day event. And I had a little lavalier mic on. And you only, you only messed this up once, okay? And it was time to take a break. And I went to the men's room, okay, with the lavalier mic on, okay? Came back into the room to a standing ovation. Oh, no. Okay? Oh, only no. Up like that room. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, no. Okay. I, mean, I, oh, I, I want some props for that, even sharing that story. Okay, give me some props for sharing that story. Because that's an example of credibility, okay? Thank you, guys. That's, a, that's an example of credibility because when you mess up, fess up, okay? And, and make it work for you. Make it, make it a, a moment. That's tweetable right there. Moment. When you mess up, fess up. Show people how to get out of it, et cetera. Show, show people how to fix it. Now, another great way to increase your credibility is follow-up, okay? I heard once that your, your fortune is in the follow-up. And so I changed that into your fortune and your future are in the follow-up. Now, you're talking about setting yourself apart from most people. Most people don't follow up. And you don't want to do what most people do because most people are broke, okay? So just by following up once, you're setting yourself apart from everybody else. But if you do that often, thank people, ask them questions, what's your biggest struggle, follow up, follow up, follow up. And it's simply crazy not to do it online because you can automate that, okay? You can automate those follow-up messages and, and, and do that automatically so you don't have to be doing it. Okay, but you're doing it, but you're not doing it right there. Okay, so follow up, follow up, follow up. Yep. We've all that had that experience of buying your... something or doing something, and you never hear from them again, right? Follow up, and your future's in the follow up, folks. 
And that increases your credibility by following up with valuable content, what Jeff's saying, because it shows that you mm -hmm. care. It wasn't just a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You know, appreciate you buying my stuff. See ya. It's, hey, I'm in it for the long haul. And that's how you get people to buy more stuff from you and develop that relationship. And I've noticed that Jeff has like 51 more hand claps than I do. And it's kind of pissing me off and I may leave unless I catch up. So let's just saying. keep it that way, folks. Come on. Boom, boom, boom. Come on. <laughs> so if you like something that I mean, Jeff or Jim or CK or both Felicia, of them. Felicia, I was what? thinking about this before we did the show. What? I was thinking that's going to okay. come up. Number of hand claps. And I thought, I know who's going to bring it up first. And I was right. <laughs> Fine. It's not bothering uh, me. That would be Jim, Jim Owens on the sound effects for the day. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't know if you can hear Sadie, the speaker dog, in the other room. She would love to be on this show right now, but she is not. She must have finished her peanut butter. All right. So um, you guys did this custom content wizard, which we'll talk about in a second. But talk more now about how can content lead to building credibility and part B, like how does content, how can content turn into a cash cow? Ooh. Okay, that's a you great go, question you because go first, Jeff. I'm going to, thank you. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you an offline example of this. And if you like what I want to tell you, okay, I want you to, already you're doing it great. Give me those props, keep those props coming in. I want to hit 300 while I'm talking right now, okay? So now back when I was a therapist, some of you know as a counseling psychologist in private practice, in a town teeming with mental health, okay? There was more therapists in Tallahassee than cab drivers. And so I did from the get-go a lot of things to try to set myself apart. The thing that did it the most was having a column in the newspaper every Monday in the Your Health section with my picture, with my words, with a way to contact me, okay? Now, that was content offline, and then it became online when the um, newspaper started using uh, the Internet. What that did for me, every single other, talk about credibility, every single other therapist in town, when someone called them up as a referral, their first question was, how much do you charge? And their second question was, will my insurance cover it? And those, those questions make sense until you really think about it, because they're asking, how little can I pay you, and can I get someone else to do it? Okay? Not a great question with which to start off a relationship, right? Because I had a column in the paper every Monday, and because I took that column every week to the number one um, soft rock morning show in town and we talked about it, um, because of those visibility things, my credibility went up so much, I became, I started to get a t-shirt like this. Probably would have done it if Tim Modem was around then, if I knew him. Uh, I became the guy in the paper in town, okay? So the first question I got when a new referral called me, wasn't how much do you charge? It wasn't does my insurance cover it? Because I didn't take insurance. I was all cash pay. First question I got was how soon can I get in to see you? And that's huge with your content. When you can show people on a regular basis how you approach their problems and how you solve their problems, you change the whole marketing dynamic upside down. Instead of you chasing customers, clients, members, prospects, whatever, they're chasing you. All right, we hit the 300 while I'm talking. Good job, guys. Um, content dramatically ups your credibility, okay? Um, I need love. Well, you're pointing to the wrong corner, Jim. No, I'm not. It's on the right corner on mine. Well, put the, put the arrow on the other side. <laughs> what can you expect to get? Hey, okay, Mike Stewart is here in the house. Hey, Mike, Mike um, we're going to open up, the, we're gonna open up the seat in a few minutes. Corner, what's the deal? All right, I need love. <laughs> Tim Modlin, we were just talking about you. Did you hear about it? Did somebody say Tim Modlin? People are talking about you on a blab. Um, Tim Modlin's right a guy who, who designs and makes awesome t-shirts. Fantastic. Sure. All right. So, um, Jim, talk about how content can be a cash cow. Well, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna share a little I have story. Another way. This is from way back in the day. And, you know, it's interesting that Jeff, Jeff and I followed very similar paths. I was a syndicated newspaper columnist for 10 years. And the reason I became a newspaper columnist was at the time I owned a web design company. And so I needed credibility for why people should listen to me on web, everything from web design to putting your business on the Internet. And so my whole thing was whenever I went out to talk to somebody about, uh, about doing a website or doing something, I would bring along a copy of the paper 
and I would show them an article that I had written that I thought was relevant to them. And that was like, they never asked, how long have you been doing this? They never asked anything. They just said, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go. So how does content turn into a, a, a cash cow? My very first multimedia info product was, I was still focusing in on real estate agents. And so I made a VHS videotape using, I, I had, I mean, I totally hot wired this thing, had it hooked up to the TV, um, had a sound mixing board from Radio Shack, was doing a live mix right into a VHS machine and literally in real time was doing a, um, a PowerPoint teaching real estate agents how to market online. I was teaching them how to do email, how to send attachments, how to write sales copy. And I made this 90 minute thing and then I went down to Target, and this was before DVD players. I went down to Target and I bought four VHS players. And then I daisy chained these things together. And oh, and by the way, I was still living in the trailer park. Um, so I people thought that I was doing porn because um, I had all these VHS things in a stack that we'd load all the, um, the blank tapes in and then I'd push play on the one and then I'd hit record real fast on all these other ones and then I was putting the labels and stuff on them. But then I would go speak to realtor groups and I would sell these tapes for $50 a pop. And so I would make anywhere between 50 and, you know, 100 sales in a month. And that may not sound like a lot, but at the time when you're really struggling, an extra $2,500 to, to $5,000 a month is a big deal. And that's when I realized a couple of things. Number one, you turn information or content into a cash cow when it solves somebody's problem. That's the number one thing. If I had to sum up everything that I have done over the years, it's been figure out a problem that somebody has that they're willing to pay for a solution and do a damn good solution for that problem. Number two, it's not to worry so much about production value as it is to focus in on just solving that problem so well that nobody cares that it might not look like it was done by Steven Spielberg. So the questions that you need to ask yourself are, is what problem do I solve? Who do I solve it for? And how do I solve it? And if you can answer those questions and then come up with something that's good, that really solves the problem, then you can do it in a way that it doesn't matter so much with the production values. It's so content that solves a, a problem. You know, and I'm, when you talk about various problems and, and things like that, I've always had the thought that there are different levels of problems. You know, there's a headache and someone will look at aspirin. But if you think about when you go to Walmart and you look for aspirin, um, do you look at price? Sure. I mean, you, you're kind of shopping around. Do I have a coupon? Stuff like that. If you cut your arm off with a chainsaw, you're not going to worry too much about how much bandages cost or what the ride to the ambulance and the ambulance to the hospital is going to cost. You just want to get the damn thing reattached. So you go after really bad problems. And that's how content becomes a cash cow. If you're just trying to do the same old thing that everybody else is doing, then you're going to get the same old results as everybody else. I've made all my money because I saw the problems that people really had that they were willing to pay for and, and turn those into cash cows and did it better than anybody else. And the reason I did it better than anybody else was because I really was tuned into the problem and I actually worked at it because success online is very much disguised as hard friggin' work. Um, for hours and days and, and stuff. The, the, the whole make money in your pajamas is a bunch of crap. So anyway, I hope I answered your question. And uh, I see that I'm being fully in the lead over Jeff and feeling quite good about myself. So I'll let, you know, I hope that answered your question. Wants to know how you guys let that happen. Come on, Basil. Why does he get eggs? That's what the hell's the egg? Or that, oh, that's a person. The egg is somebody, that's a person who doesn't have a, uh, a profile photo set up yet. They're okay. new. I thought it was and laying eggs. And that egg is Margaret. And Margaret is new. So, well, hi, Margaret. I'm glad Margaret, you're here. Margaret. Right now, all the egg people press right here. And give me all the No, that's the eggs. sound. Yeah, you're, Push he's the other telling side. you to mute him. It's he's that side. It's over right here. 
<laughs> there we go. There we go. Thank you, Mike. Thank Mike, you. That All gave right. Me one. Mike Stewart gave me one. Okay. He gave you me like ten or twenty. You got to tap a bunch. All right. So listen, wait. Um, we're gonna we're getting to the point where we're gonna open up the lines here in a second. We'll see if if Connie Connie Reagan Green is still here. She might want to jump on because um, she knows a little something about content and content marketing. A uh, little lot. All right. So um, I want to get a little meta for a second because and then we'll talk mean? about your wizard briefly. Okay. Meta, meta communication means talking about like talking, meta communicating about communicating. So we're gonna talk about like how your wizard is act your wizard is actually a type of it helps people create content so like it's this it's this interesting you know meta thing i mean like i don't know how else to say it paradox i don't know if that's the right word but where you you know you've got your somebody got a thesaurus for christmas I, <laughs> but i jim i have a question jim no, you're interrupting Felicia. Yeah. Stop. But you know what I'm saying? I'm like, isn't Felicia. so you've created Literally. so you created some content. No. Don't interrupt me interrupting her. Oh my gosh. I just have one question. Felicia, let me this. ask one. Jim, one yeah, question. go, go, go. I, I want to know one thing, Jim. What's another word for a thesaurus? All right. Book of words. Book of words. All right. I got Jim Edwards <laughs> speechless. My work here is done. Mike, Mike drop. All right. So Mike left. <laughs> Mike left. All right. So like so building content can build your credibility. What can building a wizard I mean, like in your case, building a tool like the wizard do to your credibility? That's how I wanted to ask that. Jim, you've created a couple of wizards, 20, 30, 40. Well, I don't think it's really talking about creating a wizard. It's about creating tools. That, a tool, exactly. Creating tools that help people do stuff. One of the yeah. things, I mean, it, it, one of the things that I have learned over the years, when you first, when we first started selling stuff online, I started selling back in 1997, people wanted to know everything about everything. I mean, if you were going to teach somebody how to get a result, by golly, they wanted to know down to the keystroke what you did. Now, then, then it kind of progressed to, to just tell me how to do it. Give me the skinny. Give me the lowdown. Now people want a tool. So the, the tool isn't necessarily as important as, as the result that it, gets, it helps somebody to get. So really you need to, what I have seen, to be successful, you, you got to not only sell a tool, but you got to sell people how to use the tool to get the result that they want. So it's not all a tool. It's not all information. It's a combination to help people get a result. Exactly. Because and so what I'm saying is by you creating those tools and the content that goes with it, that actually helps you boost your credibility with your people because they know when I get this, every time I get a thing from Jim, it works the way I want it to work. It does the way he says it's going to, you know, what it says it's going to do. And that just continues to build on your own credibility. See what oh, I yeah, mean? Like, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I understand exactly. When I pull out my tool, yeah. people love it. Where's the, where's the squealing you know, thing? I knew it. The squealing as thing. As soon as that was getting set up, I knew it. And I knew PG, it. And it's PG here. There some, like, pornography rules about Blab? Okay. It's PG. Is, is it, let me ask you this. Is Jim Edwards. What are you talking away? about? Is it possible to take props away from someone? I know, right? I should have gotten more <laughs> love for that. That was, so, right, that was so, such an easy setup. I could, you would have been ashamed I if know, I had let it go. I would have been ashamed. I, I, would have been, I would have been embarrassed for you, Jim. All right. All right. So tell. So we've been talking about the custom content wizard. So I'll basically say what it is because then I want to ask you about this cool thing that, it, that it, like I just found out last week. I was like, wait, it does what now? So the custom content was um, Jim creates these cool wizards. He and I created one for, for speakers. He and Jeff created one for people who are info marketers. And basically, you answer a bunch of questions. And by a bunch, it's not a lot. It's what is what's the what's the CCW like 30 questions? Yeah, but a lot of them are things like what's your name, what's your web address. Yeah, yeah. Like so I mean it's, it's not, not like hard questions, right? But it so then at the at yeah. the back yeah. end of that, name. so you answer yeah, your name, that's pretty important. Um, and then at the back end of that, after it asks you these questions, like, you know, what are some myths and what are some some problems that people have and what are things they believe that aren't, and, you know, and so on and so forth. Um, what are some steps to do things? So, like, stuff that you know inside your head that you can easily answer these questions, right? 
Then at the end, it actually spits out all this cool stuff. It generates PowerPoint slides so that you can create webinars if you want to. You can create videos using the PowerPoint slides. It spits out um, Word documents so that you can continue to finish filling in the blanks and, and put all this content out there. It's fantastic. It's very cool. Did I get it about right, guys? Yeah. Doing yeah. Good. I mean, it's it, it, more about the, the output. I, I don't want to go, yeah. I don't want to blow past what you just said with those questions. Because Jim and I designed yeah. those questions to help people create more content, and then what the feedback we kept getting from our um, from our customers was, "Wow, every time I go through those questions on a specific topic, I come out a better expert on that topic." Okay, so it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to fill that out. So imagine, folks, taking a topic, spending 15 to 20 minutes, and coming out a better expert. How's that for a return on time? And that's before you even press the output button and get all the cool stuff that comes out of that. Yeah, I think what it really does is what we, the, this particular wizard, we took Jeff's templates that he's been doing for a while and we figured out, okay, what are the, what are the, the things, the golden nuggets that make all good content? And there are certain golden nuggets that make really good content, all right? There are things like myths, there are questions, there are steps, there's, um, tools, there's advanced tips, there's questions people should ask but don't, there's mistakes that mm -hmm. they make. And so if you can pull the, these are all things that we know we should create content around, but it's, it's knowing it and doing it are two different things. So we help you to get all those things, kind of like Legos, you pile them all up and then we show you, okay, it will give you the instructions and you say, okay, you can put this set of Legos together and you'll make a fire truck. You put this set of Legos together and you'll make this. But then instead of you having to actually do it, you just click mm -hmm. a button and out pops the fire truck, out pops the plane, out pops the car. And then all you have to do is just take that little skeleton and, and put your own stuff on it to turn it into what you wanted to make. So if there's 10 steps to going from thinking to writing and finishing an article or a video, then we eliminate eight of those steps. And so you, all you have to do is just take the, the template that spits out that's already customized and then just fill in the blanks, literally. And then what we've done as we've met with people and we've done webinars and, and we've answered people's questions is we've seen other ways that we can take the, the building blocks and assemble them. And so in the last week- Yes, we, Jeff told me this. Tell we, me about this. So wait, eBooks? It does eBooks? <laughs> yeah, it does. It now has three Are different very Alicia? distinct- um, ebooks slash Kindle books that it'll help you to turn out that you should be able to write up in about two to four hours each. That's incredible. And then also um, either full length webinars or full length what we call ninety seven dollar info products, where you could sit down and literally have the PowerPoint slide deck completely done, and then all you have to do is just record it and turn it into a, um, turn it into a, a product or a webinar. So. That makes it that makes it really cool. So we're we're constantly finding new ways to use it, and um, you know, every time we add something cool, we don't charge people. We just you know, it's there and it's available. So that we're actually going to be letting everybody know about that this week. It's available now. If you already own it, you can grab it. Um, but we haven't even let everybody know that it's it's done because it really just got done yesterday. It got done and uploaded to the website. That's fantastic. So. so so, so part of what, part and of books, what, Kindle books are a fantastic form of content. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And what's really important there is, is some people ask us, well, if it could create this much of the article, why didn't you create the whole thing? And we did that on purpose. We don't want it to be, create the whole thing because then there's not enough you in there. Okay. Right. You got to have you in there. Right. You got to have the ability to right. show people how you approach their problems and how you solve their problems. So you've got, whether it's a Kindle book, an article, a social media update, a webinar, you've got two thirds of it done, and then you go put you in it, which makes it even that much stronger. Now, for the Kindle books that Felicia said, I never, I, I, you got so excited about that, Felicia. It was fun to watch. Can you do that again? It's very cool. Okay. Like very good, very good. All right, so I like that. that one right there, that one right there. I like it. So here's what you can do. Think about it this way, folks. Okay, and then we're, um, we're going to show you. No, 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 no. I need more. I need more. I'm saying the good stuff now. Way to go, Tim. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Boom, shakalaka. Past him. I love it. It ain't over. All right. Okay, so, say what you're going to say because I want to open up a seat. 
Anyone, okay, imagine, all right, you fill out these 39 questions, and you've got three different Kindle books you can use, right? Just from those 39 questions. And you've got 21 article templates, okay? You've got 64 content idea starters that are great for social media you've got a hundred and forty five content idea titles okay that you can use both in content and PPTX slides works in Mac and um, and what's the other thing called PC um, so you can use both there you can use all the articles all the videos all the social media stuff to drive traffic to that Kindle book all by answering mm -hmm. 39 questions once and the right. first one you made That's cool. um, yeah, yeah and cool. the cool thing is awesome. that you're not going to – here's the interesting thing is as you are the one that's filling out the the software, you're not going to create – you're not going to force yourself to create any content that you can't create. I didn't say that the right way. But because you're the one answering the questions, in your mind, you know exactly what you want to say about all this stuff. So it really flows very naturally. That's the other thing. Yeah, for sure. All right. So listen – um, the, the link is in the, the comments box on the, on your right hand side. Um, if you would like to contribute, I've now opened a seat. So I'm particular about who I allow in and what you're allowed to talk about. Okay. Um, you can come on and say hi to Jeff and Jim and me if you want to, if all you just want to do is say hi, that's fine. But it would be better for the show if you have a question that's useful, valuable, and could provide some, uh, the answer could provide some insight. Um, or if you have your own tip because you've done a good bit of content marketing. Uh, we have some, I'm looking across the top there at all my folks who have joined us, and we've got some pretty smart people who are watching right now. So if you'd like to join us, all you have to do is click on the thing that says log in, I think it says, um, and I can, I'll see that you're here. Yep. I also see a lot of um, custom content wizard customers on too. So oh, cool. it's okay with you. they can come on and say what they're using it for, what they've gotten out of it. Because the, the, the wonderful thing is we keep hearing from our members all that it can do. Jim and I created it to do a few things and it can do a whole lot more. And you guys are finding that out. So come on and tell us about that too. And related to the topic of credibility, um, if you have any story, if you've used the custom content wizard or created or shared content, if you have noticed some kind of an uptick or people have said something to you or made comments like, wow, you're really doing a lot of blah, blah, blah. It's really cool to see. Um, you know, that would be fantastic. And if not, um, these guys are going to keep doing their antics and we're just going to keep going here. So I've got the seat open. Feel free to join us. Uh, I don't, I haven't seen any real questions other than a few hellos and some chatting amongst yourselves in the, Melody, in the box Melody on the right Campbell. hand side. Melody Campbell, what? why don't you press that button and come on and talk about what you've been doing. Melody Campbell. Melody yeah, Melody, Campbell. come on in. Melody. So if you would like to, you sure can. Some people are a little camera shy and they don't like to do that. You know what they're afraid of, Jim? They're not coming on because they're afraid of you too. They're afraid what you're going to do. And Jim's going to go, I want your pops instead. Do you feel lucky? Do you, punk? <laughs> you're really close. Oh, he's, he's ready now. All right. So then let's keep rolling. Let's talk a little bit more <laughs> about. Um, Nobody. Okay. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Oh, my ass is swollen mm -hmm. right. All right. Do we have credibility going down the drain here, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know. I Part of credibility if, is if consistency. If you're intelligent and creative and smart enough to act like this on camera, credibility is great. <laughs> Yeah, That's part good. of credibility is consistency. People know what they're going to get. I've worked very hard to be able to behave this badly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and that's that's important, actually. Part of credibility is consistency. Actually, that's one of the things. That's why Jeff, in fact, that's why I, is Jeff over here or over there? He's up there. He's over there to me. Um, there. Anyway, that's how I got to know Jeff and why I ended up paying. I think I was, at the time, whatever your highest deal was, I took it. Um, because I followed you and, and went to your weekly teleseminar every single week. And, right. um, I mean, it was before you had, you know, before you called the results now cafe. And I mean, it was like, you were just doing content every week and I would show up and I remember because at the time Jeff was teaching how you write articles online. And so, uh, 
And a smart thing about content and marketing with content is you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. You can, you can reuse some of the stuff that you said before somewhere else in another way, in another time, in another place. Why? Because you're constantly attracting new people and some people are, are reading things and some people are listening to things and some people are watching things. So I, because I was following Jeff very closely, I had, I had read, heard, or seen a lot of what he had talked about so that when I was on that teleseminar, I would actually sit there and I'd go, oh, okay, he's talking about this. And I would pull up and I would literally write an article or I would take one of my articles that I had already written and had the good content and then I'd do what he said. Like, oh, you gotta change the first words in there so that they're keywords. Okay, I could do that. All right, now what do you gotta do? Okay, this is how you write a title. You gotta put the keywords at the beginning of the title. Oh, I could do that. Right, and I would do that by the end of his teleseminars. I had created new content just from listening and learning how to do it. And your people can do the same thing with you. See, like, so when Jeff said, I have this really expensive thing that I want to offer, I was like, sign me up. I want to do more of that because I heard all your free stuff that you shared. So now I want to, I want to pay for some stuff now. And that's like, that's the beauty of content. And he just kept going with content. And we're, we're friends years later because he was so willing to share his content and and provide that value so and one thing that and i remember that i was it was halloween of 07 i think it was 07 08 one of the one of those two yeah. it was halloween i was doing a special it was um, 07. And you came in and, did a special. and and mm -hmm. you were one of those action takers and one of the things felicia just mentioned folks that i want to see a lot of props on because this is this is huge uh what she talked about was reusing content in different places and that's the whole notion of repurposing, okay? You don't have to work as hard as you're working when you're repurposing, okay? What we're doing right now, this Blab, this can be a webinar later, okay, or webinar replay. It can be a video on YouTube. It can be on, um, on Facebook. You can do outtakes, the goofy stuff we've done from this. You can transcribe it and get how many articles out of this, okay? Um, how many blog posts, how many social media updates. You could turn this into a product if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got two guys that yeah. have built up names on the internet. This could be a product for you, Felicia, all from doing, sitting around, hanging around, talking about um, content and listening to Jim make animals. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> well, one thing you said that I wanted to, that I wanted to kind of riff on, and this really is a million dollar tip, so I better see my little clappies lighten up. Is it one of the things that adults look for when they're paying it, when they're looking on the internet is one of the questions they're asking subconsciously is what's changed, what's different. They're looking for what's different. And if nothing's different, then they just put their head back down and they, they keep going. But if they see something's different or someone's talking about what's different, then they will pay attention. So how does this apply to content? Well, you don't have to come up with a new idea for content every single time you want to do content. If you have kind of this stable of things that you talk about, like with you speaking, you know, it's how do I get to speak? How do I how do I get booked to speak? Where do I find places to get? What do I speak about? How do I close? How do I make an offer? How do I create product? There are certain things that, that your universe revolves around. So then you start talking about what's different, what's changed. So a year ago or 10 years ago, the way to talk without leaving your house was a uh, Teleseminar. So you're teaching everybody the same stuff, only how to use it in a teleseminar. Then webinars came along and you're teaching people how to do what you do with a webinar. Now Blab has come along and you're teaching people how to do what's come along with Blab. So that even further is how you can improve. You can A, prove your credibility. Two, you don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. And three, you make it easy on yourself because you're just showing people how to get the same result with with either different tools or you're showing them how things have changed and you're providing mm -hmm. much more value and it also makes you a much more valuable person to pay attention to because they know you have experience and you're not just somebody come along that that is just sticking their head up and saying hey I know about this and that that's that's so just remember that if you can teach people about what's changed and how it's changed mm -hmm then you massively can improve and increase your credibility very, very quickly and maintain it over the long haul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I have found that I, um, I love, I love to check out new stuff, the new tools. I just, I, it's fun for me. 
and I, when I find a tool that I really like, I dig in and I, and I use it like blab, for example. Right. And then, and people notice like, Oh, she's using that. Well, the cool thing is that yes, I'm using blab, but I'm, I've been talking about credibility and cash flow since 2006. I mean, I like the content isn't different. I, you know, I've got a credibility and you know, cash flow free report. No, it's not even a free report. It's a free e-course um, online. And why? Well, because people are, this is a topic that people are interested in. This is a topic people want to know more about. And, it, and am I still saying the same stuff that I said in 2006? Well, in some respects I am like, you know, make sure that you, that you're, you know, showing up, looking how you want to look, make sure you're, you know, using language that, that speaks to your market. Like those things are the same, but we're talking about different things than we were in 2006. YouTube just right. started in 2005. So we weren't talking about video. It wasn't even on anybody's real radar at that point when I was starting to talk about credibility. Now, obviously doing something with video make, can, can showcase your credibility. It can also showcase that you're not so credible in some cases, but right. it, you know, if you're, if you're smart and you're doing it right, then obviously it can showcase your credibility. So Jeff, I just mentioned something and Jim, you got excited about it. So I want you to say like, what, what should people look out for in terms of like, well, I'm going to do this blab thing or I'm going to do this Periscope thing. Cause everybody's doing it. Like how, could somebody make a mistake with regard to their credibility as far as doing one of those things? Whoever, well, can whoever, I, whoever can I just sum, I just want to sum up one thing that we were yeah, we were yeah. all talking about. Yeah. You you have a core you have a core set of principles and strategies that we all teach that you yep. teach if you know yep. what you're doing. That's kind of the foundation of your info business no matter what mm -hmm. you're doing. And then what changes over time are tools and tactics. So if you mm -hmm. want to kind of come up with a, a matrix, you can literally on a piece of paper, write down all the things that everybody needs to know. What are the strategies everybody needs to know? What are the principles everybody needs to know? And then what are the tools and tactics that help implement those? And then over time, you just keep checking in with that. And that's what's changed. That's some of the stuff that you can make the most valuable content about. So I just kind of wanted to sum that up because that's, that's something I think about yeah. a lot. Is, is having a core set of principles and, and strategies, the big picture stuff, and then those tools and tactics, how do I, how do people use those to get the results that they want? So I, I just, mm -hmm. I wanted to summarize that because I think that would help crystallize Thank it you. for everybody. Um, Thank you. That's a good thought. So, Fantastic. To your question, Felicia, about can you do anything to mess up? Okay, it's the whole credibility yeah. thing. I think With content. The biggest thing to mess up, it's not in the tool, okay? Because as you use new tools, you're going to mess up, okay? Yeah. Um, I, do, I do a daily periscope. I started doing it before I knew what I was doing. On Periscope, and and not only does messing up not hurt you if you're honest about it. I mean, sometimes I mess up on purpose on the Periscopes so I can have an outtake over on Facebook, okay? Uh, so we can have something goofy. Because how many people stayed at the end of the movie to watch outtakes, right? So, folks, that, those of you that mess up a lot, this is a great medium because then you can do outtakes and bring more people in. Okay? I think the mm -hmm. biggest way to mess up, the biggest way to mess up is to not be able to say, I don't know, okay? Because if you get on and somebody asks you something and you don't know the answer to it, if you don't have the credibility and integrity to say, I don't know, but I'll find out for you, I don't know, or let's ask somebody in the audience, if you make up an answer that you don't know an answer to, people know. And your credibility will go yep. very, very quickly that way. Now, Mike, our buddy Mike Stewart was telling us he was in Phoenix and getting on a plane to fly here to Atlanta, so travel safe. Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to get some people in this, you know, in the fourth Hollywood square. So Tim yes. Marvel, Melody Campbell, you guys have some guts, you know, get on here. Talk to us about what you're using. Here we go. All right. So John, um, before I unlock the seat, here's the rules. I boot anybody who goes off topic. So we're on topic. We're talking about credibility, content and cash cows. So that's what we're going to do. And John, as you are joining us, I'm going to say welcome. I am glad that you are here. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Hello. I'm doing, How doing, you doing awesome. Hello, John. Do you have a question or a tip uh, that you'd like yeah. to share okay, about content? Uh, just a question. I'm a social media strategist. I'm based in Nigeria, West Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been watching the conversation, and it's really mm -hmm. interesting. But I would like to know, well, what are your best tips for um Content curation versus creation. 
So what's the perfect balance, curating content or creating um, original content for your followers or your audience? I can answer that one first. Okay, Uh, go go ahead, Jim, and then I'll jump in. I was just going to say a lot of that's going to depend on how much time you have, because if you're really strapped for time, then you're going to be doing more curation than creation. So the number one thing you got to do is come up with a media schedule. How many times a day or how many times a week do you want to publish? Then take a look at how much time do you have? And then you got to decide, okay, based on the number of times I want to publish, this is how many I'm going to create myself. And this is how many times, uh, how many things I'm going to need to be able to curate. And then you just put it into your calendar and, and you just knock it out. The number one thing though, if you're going to do curation is to make damn sure that the stuff that you're curating is really, really okay. good. Don't just put something up for the sake of putting it up. And the other thing I would add is that make sure that the content has some of you in it, that it has a really good introduction from you. It's not just a, hey, I found this, <laughs> oh, it's cool. Um, but I mean, tell them why you're bringing it to them because then that still keeps you in the mix. That's what I have to say about okay, that. Okay, splendid. Splendid. Fantastic. Jeff, what do you want to add to that? Anything? I like that. I like that. And you, you said, um, John, content creation or content curation. What I want to say, it's not either or. It's both. Okay? Recently, I was at a, an event listening to somebody talk, and I was on the front row. Somebody who knows better than what he said, because I taught him better than what he said. And he stood up there saying, the age of content creation is dead. And I burst out laughing because I thought, you're creating content right now. How can content creation be dead? So now it's all content curation. The biggest danger I think when people ask those either or questions is to stay stuck with either or. It's both. Create your own content, make sure it's good, and then find other stuff that, that supports your content or even disagrees with it that you can talk about as long as it's good. Don't get something just to put it up there. Um, make sure it's good, like Jim was saying. And folks, do both. The whole notion of the age of content creation being over, think about that, okay? Imagine right now this blab with no sound and no picture, okay? you got to have it, right? And no Imagine pants. Imagine with no slides. What's that, Jim? And no pants. And no pants. Well, that's, you don't want to know those things, Jim. There's got to be a way to take away props and stuff. Yeah, there's got to be a way. Um, so... You know, I tell a seminar with no sound, a book with no pages, okay? There's no way we're never going to use content. We're always going to have content, okay? Um, and you, it's a matter of doing both, content creation, content creation. And, and as, for, as far as not wearing pants, I have on sweatpants, but I have my feet. You can't see this, but I have my feet on a 100-pound after Truman Shepherd, part wolf, and part husky. You know, so... Um, he, he knows I'm talking about him. He's coming up here. Okay, so um, that has Mr. nothing to do with what we're talking about. I just wanted to point it out because Jim talked about not having any pants. Thank you, John, for showing up. Who's next? John right. broke the barrier here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. All right. Um, bye bye. Bye bye. All you, right. Bye bye. All right. So who else is um, going to join us? We've got an open seat. We've got a few minutes. Um, if we don't feel with one of y'all, we'll have to get Charles Nelson Riley and put him right here. When, okay. when Jim, you what do you want to add, Jim? When you asked Jeff about, you know, what's the biggest mistake that people would, would make, and I really liked his answer, um, and I had a similar answer, which was the number one mistake is, is don't bullshit people. And what that means is that you don't – just Jeff's was part of that, but then it's also you need part of credibility is being authentic. And so there's a saying of don't don't lead where you don't go and don't teach what you don't know. And mm-hmm. so don't do what I've seen a lot of people do, which is to kind of there's a there's a saying fake it till you make it, which I hate that saying, by the way, is that if you just need to be authentic. And I think people think they have to be an expert in order to do content effectively. But what they don't realize is that we can all wear and we always wear three different hats. We can be the reporter so that we create content where we report what we see other people doing, what we see happening. 
we can be the expert. So we're teaching what we're actually doing and we're teaching from, from our accomplishments. And then we can also be the student where we teach what we are doing and we share the journey that we're on. So no matter what, no matter where you are with what you're trying to do with content, you can always be authentic and you can always um, have credibility if you just realize which hat you should be wearing in any particular situation. Can you say those three again, Jim? What were the three different positions? You can be the expert where you're the person who's teaching from the position of like being the college professor. I did it. I've been there, done that. You can be the student. So, I, hey, this is what I'm doing right now. And there are people who've got million dollar businesses that all they do is just publish what they're working on and people watch over their shoulder. And then you can be the reporter where, you know, that's why I named my thing the net reporter way back in the day was the name of my column because I was reporting on what I saw going on on the Internet. And so you can be the reporter, the person who just makes observations and reports the facts. Yeah, you know, that's what I was going to say, Jim, is, um, you know, to the content curation versus content creation, definitely both and um, because I always point to uh, Oprah Winfrey, like, what did she ever, like, she, all she was was a reporter. That's how she started. She was a reporter. And then she had this TV show. It was a talk show. And she said, I'm going to bring some smart people in to talk about some stuff that they know about. And so, and she would pipe in with her comments and her ideas and she would share some stuff. And um, you two are distracting me. <laughs> no, it comes um, down to add value. She was... She was a content, it's come down to add value, and she was a content curator. I mean, really, that's what she did, was she brought experts and then asked them questions, and her questions were from, and I remember her talking about this, because I've studied interviewing, because I love it, and she, um, she would ask the questions that she knew her viewers would want to know the answers to. Right. And so, because, because there wasn't blab, because they couldn't give... They couldn't, you know, ask questions themselves right then and there in the moment. So she would do her homework and she'd say, all right, so this is what my viewer is. This is who my audience is. And this is what they would want to know about this topic based on what I know about them. And then they would, she would ask those questions, which is how she would curate the content that was ideal for her people and at the same time put her spin on it. And so there's no reason why somebody couldn't do a blog post. Somebody couldn't do you know, get a, get a book, you know, do a book review and say, all right, so this is what's in this book and here's my spin on it. Here's what you can learn from the stuff that's in this book and do it as a blog post or do it as a blab or do it as a video or, or even do it as a long post on social media. It doesn't matter. Do it. Yes. And wow, you guys are going nuts with the yays. So yay, Felicia. All right. Yay. Yay. Us. All right. So thank you guys no, for being no, here. No, um, no, let no, me find no, out. Profit yeah. Um, Oprah went from small business, uh, from content curator to influencer. And that's right. absolutely true. And that's, I mean, call, that's, that's for part anybody of what you kind of hope to be in their market. When you interview people, you, in the mind of the people watching, are elevating yourself to the same level as, or, well, in Felicia's case, lowering yourself to the level of the people that you're interviewing. But that's yeah, one of the ways that, yourself, that you yeah. can you can you can raise yourself up is by being that reporter, by being the person who's seen with the movers and the shakers and asking the questions, being the proxy for your audience. Absolutely. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep, for sure. All right. Well, guys, we are um, just past the top of the hour. So for those of you who have joined us, thank you so much for being here. Uh, live, if you're watching the replay, and you've watched all the way till the end. Yay, you. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be here next, uh, next, not Wednesday, next Tuesday, because I'm here every Tuesday at noon Eastern time. So in the meantime, um, go check out Jim and Jeff's custom content wizard. The link is uh, in the, the box there. Jeff's holding up the little sign, FeliciaSlattery.com forward slash CCW. And you can um, check out how easy it is to create content when you've got a wizard, when you've got a tool that walks you through it. So be sure to mark your calendar for next week's show where I'll be talking to number one best-selling author of The Go-Giver, Endless Referrals, and more, my friend Bob Berg, all about the elevator speech. Jim and Jeff, thank you so much for being here. You guys are awesome. And, um, thank you, Felicia, for having us. Give some props to the guys. Yay. Good job. Good job. Good guys. And seriously, I, was a good you, show. Felicia, I mean, you had to get either one of us on here. 
ha- had guts to do both of it at the same time. Wow. The ladies got stones. You know what? You guys are my friends. I knew you would embarrass me too terribly bad. <laughs> we didn't embarrass you at all. I'm sorry we disappointed you. Not at all. He the anticipation was much worse than the actual event, I'm sure. That's the truth. That's the truth. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, stop the recording, and I'm going to say goodbye for now.